Good evening. Welcome. I'm calling to order this meeting of the Arlington Select Board on Monday, April 24th. I am Select Board Chair Eric Hillman. And I have the correct script. Honored to be present, but not being called to order. Tonight's meeting is being conducted in a hybrid format, consistent with Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023, signed into law on March 29, 2023, which further extends that certain COVID-19 measures regarding the participation in public meetings until March 31st, 2025. Before we begin to begin, please note the following. First, this meeting is being conducted in the select board chambers and over Zoom. This meeting is being recorded and simultaneously broadcast on the same line. Second, Persons wishing to join the meeting by Zoom may turn the information how to do so on the council website. Persons participating by Zoom are accepted. You may be visible to others, and if you wish to participate, we ask you to provide your full name in the interest of developing the record of the meeting. The same is true for anyone on the public here in the chambers. Third, all participants are advised that people may be listening who do not provide comments, and those persons are not required to identify themselves. Both the participants and persons watching on ACMI can follow the post agenda materials found on the town's website, specifically the select board agendas and minutes page. Let's see how much of the town's business we can get done tonight. Speaking of which, uh, this is the meeting, of course, prior to our first session of annual town meeting, when they were to be done before 8 p.m., so that uh, ACMI can record both events. Also, as a note, uh, after I will introduce myself and turn the meeting over to my vice chair, Mr. Hurd, our vice chair, Mr. Hurd, uh, because uh, owing to my employment in the state senate, I have to recuse myself from any matters that involve special legislation. So uh, at that point, Mr. Hurd will just carry the meeting forward until adjournment and I'll see you all down the stairs. Any questions from the office? Thank you very much. The first item on the agenda is the consent agenda. Second by Mr. Kerr. Any discussion or questions? Hearing out a motion by Mr. Higgins, seconded by Mr. Kerr. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Please be unanimous. I think in retrospect I will read the consent agenda for the public's um, information. We approve the minutes of the meeting for April 10th. Rainbow Commission's 2023 Pride Celebration of Liverpool Park on June 17. The request for a contract with the Rain Layer License by Hercules E.G. Green. Another request for the same by J.O.C. Construction. A request for a special one day green white license at Leslie Ellis School from Hannah Russia. A request for temporary county exemption for the Allenton High School Junior Senior Park Houses. Summer concert series at Liverpool Park on various days in July and August. Our next item of business are two more. This is for the embedded special town meeting that will be May the 5th, is that right, Ms. Mark? Was that on the 3rd? On the 3rd, May 3rd. Uh, so, the purpose of this tonight is for the select board here for the article presentation to have a discussion with the components. We will then, for each of the articles, open up the floor for comments. Each comment, commenter, uh, from the public is going to be three minutes and has to stay on the topic of those articles. Uh, at that point, we'll show the session and the board will vote a action. And at that time, uh, I think that Attorney uh, Hyde will probably invite us very carefully in the uh, carefully constructed film and blank exercise he's made for us. And I will then produce a very succinct record of our record of the vote. So we can be ready inside. Mr. Hurd? Any discussion about our procedure? All right. So the first item in the warrant of the hearing is Article 2 vote for the hybrid town meeting instead of the meeting. So we have a representative from the town meeting procedure. Christopher Moore, Precinct 14, and member of the Town Meeting Procedures Committee. Um, the Article 2 is a proposal to create a study committee to study the possibility of hybrid format town meeting. Uh, we're well aware that there's not clearly legislative 
uh, authorization to even do that at this point. So one of the things the committee is going to have to look at is what would it take uh, legally, also what would it take technically, uh, and you know what would be the reasons for doing it, what communities would be served by having an easier time uh, participating in town meeting. Um, and uh, you know what beneficial effects would we expect, and what detrimental, detrimental effects might we expect? Uh, we carefully uh, put together the motion that we suggested to the board um, to not presuppose an outcome about what sort of recommendation the committee might make. Um, the intention is also for this committee to live on, uh, probably for a couple of years, to figure out all the stuff that needs to happen, and then to help with the implementation, much like the electronic voting study committee did. some direct attention from potentially a larger group uh, than the Town Meeting Procedures Committee, which is, is uh, five people, including the moderator, who has a big job. Um, so we thought it would be helpful to have a, a focused group on this. Thank you. We've had no, we've had no public comment. We've had a discussion. We have a motion. Once again, by Mr. Hurt, second by Mr. Dickens. I'm sensing a trend. Um, on the motion to uh, for favorable action, all in favor. Thank you very much for your work. Looking forward to your uh, Thank you. At this point, I will turn the meeting over to Mr. Hurd as Vice Chair. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I will make some opening remarks, and then I would like to call on the police chief to uh, offer her perspective. We also ha have, in addition to Chief Flaherty, uh, our Human Resources Director, Karen Malloy, uh, to answer any questions. This is a 
piece of home rule legislation or special legislation that we would file uh, with the general court that would allow us to exempt from civil service procedures our hiring of police officers. Once those officers were hired uh, and on staff and passed, passed their probationary period, uh, they would then have full civil service rights uh, if they wanted to complain about how we were treating them or their status or promotions or so forth. Um, the reason that we are asking town meeting for this authority uh, is that, like a lot of communities, we have found it's been getting more and more difficult to not only hire uh, all sorts of staff, but in particular, it's getting harder and harder to hire police staff. We've noticed in other communities that are not in the civil service system that they get many more applicants for their jobs than Arlington does. Um, and so uh, we thought this would be a good step in the right direction. Um, we had been talking with the unions about the possibility of exiting civil service entirely. Um, that is somewhat a uh, conversation that's going on in bargaining with them. So instead of taking that full step at this point, um, we thought let's just try to get us out of the hiring part because I think everybody agrees. I don't want to speak for the unions, but I think everybody agrees that the civil service hiring process uh, is not good for the town and makes it difficult for us to hire qualified people. Um, there are lots of details about how that works. I'd be happy to answer any questions, but I would respectfully request that uh, the police chief be allowed to speak to this issue. Good evening, Chief Julie Flaherty. Um, so I, I don't think it's a secret that since I was appointed as chief, I have been exploring um, or looking at the idea of coming out of civil service for hiring for many different reasons. Um, but I think at this point right now, we are entering into a hiring crisis. So about 30 years ago when I first came on and I sat down and took um, the civil service test, I was competing with over 300 other candidates for two or three positions. And that's just not happening anymore. We're not seeing people um, signing up to be police officers anymore at this point. Um, last month, civil service had um, an entry level exam and they had nine people sign up for the test. I don't know how many people actually showed up to take the test and I don't know how many people um, passed that test because they won't have the scores back until September. Last March, we had um, civil service had an entry level exam and 16 people sat down and took that test. We just started um, bringing some people in to begin um, hiring police officers, and of those 16 people that we reached out to, only six came in and expressed interest in being a police officer. Of those six that we interviewed, we identified four um, qualified candidates who will move on in the process. And what we've seen in the past is we, um, we give conditional office of employment, we go through the whole process. Um, and then the last portion of the process is um, a physical abilities test to get into the academy, and that's where we're losing people. If we had um, come out of civil service for hiring, we would be able to administer our own exams, our own um, tests for entry level, one, two, three, how many um, times a year we determined we'd always have an active list. And on the day of the test, we could test people for their physical abilities to enter the academy and the written test. So we would know ahead of time who was ready for the academy um, and we would be able to develop a list then and we would save precious time and money and energy. Um, and not lose people at the very end stage. Um, when I talk to my colleagues who have left civil service, they're not having this problem. Um, a civil service police departments are, um, they are able to um, go to colleges, go to their um, so, um, social work departments, psychology, sociology, criminal justice departments, and recruit graduating seniors because they don't have to be residents. Um, they're able to recruit from college campuses, police officers on college campuses who are already post-certified and even our larger um, hospital campuses in Boston. So they're not seeing this problem. They're having exams. They're having 50 to 100 people come on the day of the exam to take the test, and they're able to um, hire qualified candidates and diversify their um, their police departments. So ultimately, I think it comes down to I am responsible for making sure that everybody in the community is safe, and without police officers, I'm not able to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Chief. Good. All right.
right. I'll open up to the board for any questions, comments, or motions. I'll make a motion. Oh, oh. go ahead, Mr. Is it Oh, I'm not a um, I did have a conversation um, on the phone with the town manager and with the chief, um, and certainly um, understand all the points that, that have been made um, and indicated I'm, I'm willing to vote for this to go to town meeting. However, when I see the comment, the draft comment that's attributed in there, um, that really, because I said coming to town meeting as a town meeting member, I would vote against this. So, but since the comment says for me, if I vote positive action on this, um, then I'm urging town meeting to do that. Um, I won't be voting for it. And I'm gonna say, tell you the reasons why. Um, I understand everything the chief is saying and um, I, just to segue in, um, I know a lot of cities and towns are, have um, joined or ascribed to the 30 by 30 program and Arlington also is in that, which is by, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, by 2030, at least 30% of your workforce should be diverse. Um, and I know the town of Lexington is really, um, I've been watching them and getting their updates. They're really excited that two of our female police officers um, are helping them get to their 30 by 30 by leaving Arlington. Um, I think the problem that Arlington has, and not just with the police department, but also with public works, is we're not competitive in salary. We have two outstanding female police officers, and please, Mr. Town Manager, Chief, correct me if I'm wrong, that did apply to Arlington, we did put them through the academy, invested them, and if they're not already in Lexington, they're going, and they're gonna make 27 and $30,000 more. Um, I think that's the issue um, with this, and where the comment, the way it's designed, it's saying I'm endorsing this, which I wasn't. I said I'd, I'd be willing to vote for it to go to town meeting, which is the conversation I had with both people, and would vote no there. Um, um, because I think this is something town meeting should discuss and debate. Um, I still wouldn't be in favor of, of it just for the arguments given, which is we need to attract more candidates. And um, I think first and foremost with, um, and I know I've said this before, I apologize for repeating, having seven and nine vacancies respectively in um, the Department of Public Works and Parks and Field and Highway, you know, for everything that we're doing, uh, natural turf or not or anything else, it's not gonna be maintained and we're not even competitive with Stoneham, which I believe their population is about 20 something thousand. So I don't think the issue is getting people to apply um, for the police department because like I said, we attracted two great um, female candidates, but once they get here and they see um, how vastly underpaid they are, I think that's gonna continue, so I just wanted to explain that I'm all for this debate at town meeting. I'm not in favor of it. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Um, I appreciate your being straightforward and honest about that, and thank you very much. Um, I would say uh, we do try to offer competitive salaries. There are some communities like Lexington that just have so much more wealth than we do that it's hard to compete with them. We do have a town manager 12 where we've compared ourselves to. We think we are competitive with that and we think we've put competitive wages out there. However, I'm not here tonight to debate mm -hmm. our collective bargaining strategy. Um, I would uh, respectfully ask that the board do put this to town meeting so we can have a debate there uh, where I think it would be an appropriate place to have that debate and, and let them decide. Um, I do think, um, Having worked in a town before that didn't have civil service and seen what it's like here, I do see how it holds us back. And uh, I do uh, respectfully request that town meeting be allowed to take up this issue. Thank you. And could I just add, um, if the draft comment were that the vote of the, and I'm not saying this has to happen. Um, I didn't, By, yeah. if, if the vote was, that the select board thinks this is an important issue, that is something that town meeting, um, certainly if the town leaders need to hear the discussion at town meeting and their um, 
subsequent vote on it, that's sort of a comment that I could vote for it. But this is saying something different. So, yeah. thank you. And my comment was when you take the chair, you have to speak last. But to Attorney Heim, along the lines of what Mrs. Mahan just mentioned, can we just update the draft comments to say, because this is similar to the issue that we dealt with a couple of years ago when we were taking the chief's position out of civil service. And we actually didn't vote, didn't vote to put it on the warrant, and then we circled back and we got it into the special town meeting, and I voted against it as a town meeting member. Um, or I don't know. I don't remember if I was a town meeting member at the time. I don't want someone to call me out. <laughs> of it. But I think for me, you know, I've spoken to a few people about this and certainly see both sides of the issue. So I would like to to be in a position where I just say we're going to push it along to town meeting for a debate and I'll go down there and I'll wear my town meeting hat and decide where it is, where I land when we go to vote. Um, so can we just amend? I assume it's within our purview to amend what's in the top draft comment. Yes, uh, Mr. Vice Chair. Uh, the comment can say whatever you want it to say. Uh, and I attempted to draft a comment that would allow you to say the select board urges positive action or no action, uh, but clearly I didn't do yeah. a particularly good job of that. So you can erase the whole comment and just have the comment say, the board forwards this uh, matter for town's meeting consideration. Um, it's your comment, so you can have it read however you want. Yeah, I don't think there's anything too dramatic in there other than the word urge, and so I would just move it to the select board moves positive action instead of in those two locations. but. Again, I'll open it up for additional comment from the board. Mr. Well, Diggins? Yeah, well, as we know, I mean, it's going to town meeting anyway. It's just a matter of how it goes there. I mean, so if it goes there, there's going to be positive action for us or no action. I mean, so, so, I mean, I think everyone should vote how they feel and make the sentiments known. You know, and, and so and I think that's good information for town meeting to know. I mean, the extent to which we are unanimous or not. You know, or, or maybe maybe we need two, two, maybe three, one. You know, we'll see. Uh, so, so I mean, it's going to town meeting, you know. Uh, I, um, I guess, I, mean, I see no one in the room, so I'm not, not going to hear any comments from anyone else. Can someone tell me what the other side of the argument is for this? Uh, yeah. Um, Besides the civil service process itself and taking the tests and things like that, the other thing is um, one of the benefits of civil service is that if you have a police officer that wants to go to another city or town who also is in civil service, um, the chief in Arlington can say, no, I can't afford to lose that officer. They have to stay here. Now, if... Um, the officer wants to go to a city or town either that doesn't have civil service in Massachusetts or is outside of Massachusetts, all that goes away. Um, and I know I've been on this board a long time that um, we've had police chiefs come in, um, not have civil service. We've taken it out, case in point, Chief Ryan. Then when he came in, we gave him civil service status for a whole abundance of reasons, which I'm not going to reiterate here because I'm not going to get them correct because I it didn't do my homework on that. Um, so the town, in my opinion, definitely sees value uh, in civil service. But I certainly understand the chief's plight. But um, it, and, and there are other benefits that probably somebody from the union or someone else um, would tell you that, that civil service affords the town. I don't know that the town manager is going to want to do that. So um, I'll leave it at that. And I don't know if any of my colleagues want to add to that. Yeah, I mean, the conversation side, it's separate issues since they'll have civil service protections while they're on the force, and some of the benefits of civil service will be there in place anyways. I mean, I think I was going to talk after, but I'm going to go, go now. Um, it's civil service has been the way it's been. There's, I think the, there is still a list. I, I think there's a few people that just recently took the test, and the question would be where do they fall in the scheme of the hiring, I think. Um, and then I think some co conversations shift to what's not really the meat of this article is not 
let's not have a hiring problem, pro hiring issue because let's retain our talent. And that is definitely an important conversation to have. Um, it gets frustrating to me, at least, uh, that every year after year we seem our bargaining seems to go into arbitration that we can't work with our officers. I understand, and I've had conversations with people about the limitations that Arlington has. I think they're having the same conversations at the school committee level with teachers and pay relative to some of the neighboring cities and towns, and it's the same. We have this conversation in many different forms with lack of ability to create new growth and the limitations of Proposition 2.5, and, and that is a real aspect of the discussion, but I think for something like this, some of the officers definitely want to want to see some, some movements in the way that the town negotiates with unions. And, you know, it's a tough, we don't step into the role of collective bargaining. We've been chewed back by a couple of town managers now um, when I do, but, you know, I, I think that's one of the one of the arguments that you will hear from officers is, you know, let's not just look at how we hire to replace. It's, you know, you kind of making an officer that's been with the town for 20 years expendable, but we can pull somebody back in pretty simply if we pass this legislation. Um, but again, it's not, everyone understands that there is an issue with hiring police officer in civil service, we, I think you know, the chief can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I'd heard one time the chief was trying to hire five people, five people applied and one person got through the academy. And so now we're having issues as people retire, people leave, where detectives are getting pulled back into uniform and um, it's just not, we definitely need to find a solution. So I, you know, I, I, I always get weary with issues like with this, but I think it's something that I'll vote for to move on to town meeting for the, the discussion. And, you know, we'll see what happens at, at the state level. We don't, I'm not sure, Mr. Town Manager, do you know if this is passed in any other jurisdictions or is this a no novel idea for the state to review? Uh, it's a somewhat novel idea. The, town, the city of Attleboro put forward a, a similar proposal. I will say for the last two years that I know of, there have been several petitions for towns to move out of civil service entirely, none of which have moved in the State House. So I, I will not pretend that if this passes town meeting and we send it to them, that it's a, a done deal. It's a complicated issue up on Beacon Hill involving multiple unions, uh, particularly the fire union, which is dead set against any changes. The police may be a little less so, but it's, so on Beacon Hill, it's just a difficult situation, but I think this at least would send a little message to uh, our senators, legislators, and the legislative leadership that something needs to be done. Okay. Is there any more comments or questions yeah, well, from the board? Yeah, yeah. No, so, um, so I understand I mean, that the with civil service that you had at one point being 300 people applying and now being very few. I mean, is that even across the board with, with um, non-civil service? Um, if I may, Mr. Chair. Yes. Um, in, there are communities. Burlington just got out of civil service, for example. You know, they get 100 people applying. Uh, I think the last time they opened up a um, job application there. Uh, and I know when I was back in Amherst, we had plenty of people applying. So the non-civil service communities have much better luck and make it much easier for them to get, attract people to apply for jobs in their towns. I understand. My question was, though, is the trend going down for them also? Yes, there are more communities getting out of or trying to get out of civil service than staying. There aren't people moving into civil service at this point. Sorry, I still have so I think what Mr. Diggs is asking is of the, so, you know, I talked to somebody, I think Burlington had 200 applications when they opened it up. If they opened it up today, would they have 200 applications or is the trend that people in general are uh, less think, likely to apply for police officer positions? I think the trend in general is that it, 
it is harder to hire people in police positions. I think that's all across the country, frankly. I mean, I, I read articles about that. So in that regard, I think we're trying to have a multi-tasked position of taking away as many obstacles as we can to hiring. I think civil service is an obstacle. We need to get rid of that. But, you know, without, again, without getting into the particulars of, of collective bargaining, I think we try to, we're trying to put things out that would uh, be favorable to the unions and favorable to being able to hire and retain people. So it's a multifaceted approach. So I mean, only that because I mean, I mean, the problem is, is getting more people to apply and just want to know whether or not this is a solution to it. I mean, I'm supporting it for other reasons. One you know, is, is because it was a recommendation you know, from the equity audit team, and I, I understood the rationale for that, and, and I, I support it. I mean, on the other side of it, I, mean, I do understand the value in having people from the community, uh, police in the community, you know, but in a community that I mean, uh, has Arlington as a composition, I mean, which is historically based, I mean, uh, the only way to get more diversity pretty much is to you know, bring it from 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 outside. I mean, I mean, it's a difficult state, though. I mean, and so so I mean, you take it from you take it from someplace else. They have less, you know, um, and, and so. Uh, but like I said, I, mean, I think the equity audit. I mean, um, I, I like the reasons for that. I understood those reasons, and then of course there is the chief of police who is is supporting this. I mean, and, and I. I I'm, I'm, I'm just going to give that a lot of weight, you know, just as I would if it were going in the opposite direction. It'd be really hard for me to go against, you know, unless I had, unless I had some compelling reason uh, to, and I don't, you know. But I would urge my colleagues, I mean, respect to report, you know, because once again, this is going to town meeting, and I think it's important to town meeting to know if, if you don't support it, you know, and, and not to say you support it just to get to town meeting, because it's going there anyway, so I think it's important if you don't that you let people know that you don't and why you don't so that they have more information to make a decision. So that's it. Thank you. Well, if I may, this is the vote on sending it to town meeting. At town meeting, members have the ability to express themselves at that point in the debate. So I would respectfully take a different position from what you've just articulated, Mr. Jans, because um, I think the vote tonight is whether to give town, opportunity, town meeting the opportunity to take up the issue. Well, thank you for that. I misunderstood. And so I just assumed that it was it was, it was going as a matter whether we voted positive action on, on town meeting to take it up or not. So I clearly misunderstood. I'm sorry for that. I withdraw <laughs> my advice, you know. And, and so now I, I, I'm still going to support the town meeting. So I understand. Now I understand why you always say taking the position you are. Thank you. Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Um, yeah, just a, a follow-up question, and, and, and I'm aware of the, the Attleboro. I believe this, this actually is almost identical to what is, is currently pending at the legislature for the city of Attleboro. Is that the first time Attleboro has attempted to do this, or do, have they done it in a prior session and it wasn't approved? I believe, do you, I believe. Okay. All right, I, believe just I don't know. curiosity, <laughs> I know it's pending in the current session. Yeah. Um, and, and again, just to be clear, if, if an individual is hired after the 12 months, that, that police officer is considered a civil service police officer. Okay. Yeah, I, there's a lot of issues here in terms of um, civil service, what happens with the civil service program, that it, and, and whether there's an opt-out later on or whether they're – there isn't in challenges in terms of flexibility, both for officers and for communities. And I think based on what the, the chief has said to, tonight, I'm, I'm willing to support this for hiring uh, purposes because it, it, you know, clearly there, there are challenges here. I, I, I will say there are a number of other issues. Mrs. Mahan referred to them. I think, I think those go beyond what's being attempted here, but they certainly are very important and certainly things that, that need to be addressed as, as, as we go forward. And, and I think for purposes of the town meeting discussion, I think it would be important just to try to distinguish presently what's happening with civil service communities, non-civil service communities. Because I know just in general, I think earlier this year that the commissioner of the city of Boston Police Department sent letters to the Massachusetts Association saying we can't hire uh, police officers either. So, so there are major issues here in terms of, of hiring, but I think for, for this limited purpose, um, 
I, I'd be willing to, to go along and support it. Thank you. Yeah, and I guess just to wrap up our discussion before we go to public comment, I'd say it sort of touches in on what Mrs. Mahan was saying and leads into Ms. Ligon's question. Is, is this, are we going to see 200 applicants? Probably not, because there's a whole host of figures, including what does it pay? How are, what's the reception? How are the offices treated? And it, that's, I, I think that's separate issues that we need to continue to work on to make sure that we're taking care of our police department and we're attracting new members and we're retaining our current members because there's certainly a lot of value in institutional knowledge of officers that have been in the town for a long time. Um, so I think there are, again, I'll support this to send this to town meeting. I'll wear my town meeting hat down there when I vote. Um, but it's a continued, I think there is a continued discussion that we're going to have beyond just the hiring because we don't want to go through it. Even if we're hiring out of civil service, we, I don't think the chief wants to, op wants to take up all her time hiring where there's constant turnover. So I will support this at this hearing. I will likely support it at town meeting. And, but again, I want to continue to have those conversations to make sure that our officers are, are being treated fairly and they're be, being paid what they should within the limits of what the town can provide. And, and certainly from resident perspective, town perspective, from us, that the officers are getting the respect they deserve for the work that they do. So. Mr. So if I could just say one more thing. And because this was on the special town meeting warrant, there wasn't a long time between when it was published and when we had the hearing. There's nobody in line who, or nobody here who, who is speaking to this, but I, I, I mean, I think given the short time frame, if there are people out there who have concerns that think that we should be aware of the concerns, I, I would encourage them to contact us and, and, and let those concerns know or, or let reasons that they're in favor of it be known too before we go to the special town meeting because I think the limited time may or may not have affected that. But I mean, I think it helps us, all of us, get as much information as we can. I suspect there may be some folks that have comments. Yes. Um, quick question, because it's been raised a lot. Um, I'm not getting into collective bargaining, but uh, through you, Mr. Chair, if the town manager or the human resources director, um, I think I know 10, but, and I think when I put up public works and uh, police on the Arlington 12, we're very near the bottom. Could you quickly uh, list out as close as you can who the Arlington 12 communities? I understand for like town manager and M schedule employees, we're at the top. I understand for like teachers, we're at the bottom at like 68% and police officers are like 72%. But could you list the Arlington 12 or come close to it? Um, Needham, Belmont, Stodham. Belmont, Okay, so I, I, I reiterate again that Stoneham's paying better than Arlington is for town jobs. So, anyways. Thank you. And with that, this is public This is a public hearing. We'll first go to anyone in the room that would like to speak. And is there anyone on Zoom? Seeing no hands raised. That will close the public hearing for sure. Yes. Mr. Davis? So, I mean, I'm, I'm reading the text of the article, and, and it says to see if the town will vote to authorize and request this select board to petition the Mass General Court to exempt the town of Arlington from provisions. So it doesn't seem to me like we're voting on whether to send this to town meeting. Can I clarify, Mr. I think what the discourse here is, is, is the select board, through its comment, really just a comment, articulating the position that it supports and wants town meeting to take a certain action, or that it just wants town meeting to talk about it and take a vote. So for example, in the draft comment, it just sort of says, select board moves, insert position actions. 
So the, what I intended there was positive action, negative action, whatever it was. But you could also draft something that reads like, the select board forwards this article for the purposes of town meeting's discussion, and then close it out with the balance. The board does not take a substantive position on this article, but advances it to town meeting for its collective discourse and judgment. So I think what your colleagues are talking about, from my perspective at least, what I'm hearing, is that the part of the discussion is, are we voting on this and saying, town meeting, please do this, or are we voting on this because if we don't vote on it, the, the default motion is no action before town meeting. It would need either a substitute motion or something like that to be before the meeting. So do I have that correct? Yeah. Where I'm confused a little bit, I think Mr. Dickinson is in the same place. I thought you should put more in your mouth. Oh, no, please. please. Is my recollection for the last time we, hit, we put initially this for a special town meeting is that we have to vote to put it, send it to town meeting, correct? The, the, the special town meeting is only articles that the select board votes to put before town meeting? No, Mr. Vice Chair. These articles are on the special town meeting okay. warrant. You are voting whether or not you're going to have a positive action motion, or if there's a no action, that is the default okay. action before town meeting. And, and maybe maybe I understand what you're doing. So all special legislation, any special legislation we ever submit of any kind has that same preamble. Okay. It's, it's town meeting, will you authorize the select board? Because the select board always files special legislation okay. through our legislative delegation. Right, right, right. Okay. So, so we're back to where I thought we were because we, as the town manager said, that we were voting whether or not to even send this to town meeting. And, 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 and I mean, my understanding is that I mean, this is going to town meeting. This is a matter whether it goes there with no action or positive action. If I, if I may, Ms. Pleggins, if there's no positive action, someone would have to submit a substitute motion. Now, a town meeting member could do that, but they're not guaranteed to do that because this was inserted at the request of the manager. The manager cannot submit a substitute motion of his own volition. Only a town meeting member can do that. I understand. Gotcha. And so, me, so yeah, that's how it is with any article, right? Means, yes, sir. So, yeah, so, so, so I understand. And, and I guess what I was getting. Never mind. I could go on. We're all on the same page. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> so I, I think you're hearing that it will get there. So before you, you all take a vote, I just want to make sure I understand from a comment perspective, and again, a comment can read however you want, it's your motion, um, whether or not you want this draft comment to just be we urge positive action or you want it to be the slightly more tamped down version that I just sort of articulated where you're forwarding it to town meeting for discussion and or you're saying you don't take a substantive position, but you're advancing it for a town meeting's discourse and judgment. I can, I'll confirm with Ms. Mahan can certainly talk on this. I just think if, if it says the select board moves positive action, which is what we're doing, okay. I think we sometimes give ourselves a little more influence over the, uh, the way town meeting votes than we have. Um, so I mean, we're spending time a little bit on semantics, but I, where it says urge is kind of like we're really pushing this, whereas some of us are, you know, we might urge something that we ultimately vote against. So I would, and Ms. No, again, Ms. Mahan can comment on this, but I just think if it says we move positive action, I don't think it's going to sway the time meeting vote one way or another, but is a little more in line with what you're hearing from the board, is it not? <clears throat> I agree with that, but I want to wait to see. I don't know if there's a motion yet, but I, I'm, I would be interested in if the motion is what Mr. Hurd said, select board moves positive action to go to the town meeting, or, which is within the purview of my colleagues, if the motion is um, the select board moves positive action and requests, urges, whatever word you want to use. So. And I don't know, is there a motion? I don't think there's a motion there. There is no motion. So, it, but, so it's whatever, whoever wants to make the motion. <clears throat> if you want to just make the motion to move positive action to send this to town meeting, that's something I can vote for. But if you feel so inclined that, no, I want to, I want to go the whole 100%, then that would be your motion, and I would not vote for that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Do you want to make the motion? No. <laughs> <laughs> Because don't even get me started with the legislation. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Hello. I, 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 I think there's a range of, of, of where people are, but I think for the purposes of having a four to zero vote, I, I, I think 
based on what Mr. Hurd said and what I'd be comfortable with is in, in the first sentence, the select board moved positive action on this article and I'd strike the last sentence of the comment and leave everything else in there. And, and I don't know if that's comfortable with the other members and then to the extent that people have more comments that they want to give as individuals, they can do it at, at town meeting. But I mean, I think it, 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 you, I, I'm going to move positive action on, on, this, on this article and, and, and just leave it at that. And now, if I could say to that, if the first sentence, as Mr. DeCourcy says, if the second sentence, um, I don't agree with that, and everything else would be fine. Um, it, it, the, the summation of uh, Mass General Law Chapter 31. Um, so. I don't know how strongly people fear about that, where it says, in short, sets forth many criteria, you know. That. I'm just trying to understand what you're saying. I'm not disagreeing. I'm not agreeing. I'm just trying to understand. I'm just asking if we could take well, out. Take out the second sentence in short. All right. You know. Yeah. And then leave everything else where it says the proposal before the board is to remove civil service requirements and da 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 da. Yeah. I'll cut that. I mean, and this, of course, I pretty much made the most of that I was going to make because I do really want to reflect the sentiment of the board here now, you know. So, but, Mr. Yeah, of course, he's a high brow, so far, he's like, I'd like, I would like to wait until they exclude that whole thing. See, and the thing is, we're in the unique position that we already have our draft comment before us right. before we've even voted. If we didn't have that, we wouldn't be in this vote right now. So, please don't anyone, which I don't, feel that anyone is doing that, is to take that into, a, in a, into account. Um, so if you could kind of wipe that, you know, because I mean, I could go on for another 20 minutes, but you don't want me to, to disagree with that second sentence, but I'm not going to go there. My only concern in the comment is, is we have chapter 31 in the vote. I think chapter 31 has to be identified as, as, as what it is in the comment. And if you don't agree with the, the, the full sentence, that's fine. But I mean, I think somewhere yeah, no, you have to identify what yes. chapter 31 is yeah. in the comment and, and, and what's happening here. That's fine. Just as a matter of fact. That's fine. It's in section one. Um, a discussion of what? May I make a suggestion? Yeah, no, no, it says that it's chapter 31. Sure, yeah. General Laws doesn't say that's the civil service provision. So that's all. If you'd like to proceed in this manner, it could read, the select board moves positive action on this article for the purposes of town meeting's discussion, or it just moves positive action on this article. The proposal before the select board is to remove civil services, parentheses, general law, chapter 31, requirements and criteria with respect to new hires only. Under the flexible criteria set forth in the special legislation above, it does not otherwise propose to affect civil services processes, conditions, or rights with respect to employment, promotion, etc. Police officers or ranking officers. And then it's just the end. Yeah. I, I, the only thing on that is is what what I moved is we moved um, favorable action, and and then again individually. I, I think the concern was with the word urges. So, I for me I, I don't really need the for, the four purposes after that. I think that's up to the individuals down the town meeting if if they're opposed to it as town meeting members. So. I mean, do we want to simplify this and just as the select board moves to positive action on the article? Yeah. And leave it at that? Yes. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> backspace, backspace. Delete, 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 delete. Plenty of discussion. But I did want to say that was very good on the spot editing. <laughs> that was almost Dan Dunn esque. <laughs> So it's just so clear, right now the proposal would be the select board moves positive action on this article. Yes. Okay. Sorry for all the time you spent on no, that. No, no, no. <laughs> of course. It was a very well written, written comment before. No, it's, it's, your, it's your comment. That's what it should reflect. Do you have a second? Second. Any more discussion? All right. So we have a motion for positive action only. From Mr. Corsi, second by Mr. Diggins. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? That is a 4-0 vote with Mr. Helmut recusing himself. We have, that move brings us on to correspondence received. Move receipt. With 
online ADA compliance report from Joan Roman. We have a motion to receive. We have a second. Second. We have a motion to receive from Mrs. Mahan, second by Mr. DeCourcy. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? We have new business. New Mrs. Mahan. Thank you. Mr. Heim. No new business. Mr. Pula. Um, I would just mention now what I sent to you in the email that there is something on YouTube now. You have the link to it. Uh, you might just want to take a look. Oh. Ms. Mahan. I wasn't going to have new business, but to that end, I do want to thank the select board's office. Um, I have not reviewed the whole 48 minutes, but I did go to um, the uh, encounter in the select board's office, and um, I did call Ms. Marr and ask her to pass along my congratulations for the uh, exemplary way that they um, performed as they do every single day. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Diggins. No new business. Mr. Corsi. No new business. And I would just, I guess I'll call, I only saw the first meeting, but <laughs> not the man to handle himself very well. Um, so, it is entertaining. Ms. Uh, I'd like to move that the select board adjourn and reconvene down at Arlington's regular town meeting and that we remain in session throughout the course of the annual town meeting and that our adjournment of the select board will be at the annual town meeting will be concurrent with the adjournment of town meeting at the annual town meeting. Do have a second? And I just said that so many times because when we go into the special, we'll have the same vote. Thank you. Yeah, that's why we never call on anyone else to make that motion. <laughs> right, we have a motion by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by, seconded by Mr. Diggins. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? We have a 4 0 vote. No recusal, please. Absence. Yes.